uh, the top story that I want to explore with you tonight is all these kind of uh, Palestinian, pro-Palestinian protests that seem to be erupting all over the UK in recent weeks. These things are not slowing down, absolutely not. And actually, some of the behaviour, I would argue, is absolutely escalating now. You've seen some of this, I'm absolutely sure. We've had uh, spray-painted mice being thrown into McDonald's. We've had different uh, shop windows put through. Uh, we've now had situations where train stations, people uh, seem to think they can go and sit among their main kind of ticket hall concourses uh, to argue for uh, free Palestine situations. We've had people spray painting uh, different buildings. We've just had so much stuff going on. I mean, one of the things that I always find quite fascinating, some of the people that think it's OK to get on top of these buildings, spray painting it with whatever message that they feel fit of the day, why do they conceal their faces if they are so loud and proud and massively into the cause uh, that they are celebrating? Why not show your face then? Never understood that, have you? Uh, Peter Hitchens, these uh, protests, they are not going away. Uh, they will be ramping up, if anything, over the coming days, weeks, uh, probably months. This conflict's not going to be solved anytime soon. That's the guy, like I was just mentioning. I mean, if you feel so passionately about your cause... Why do you look like you're about to go rob a bank halfway on your way to a football match? Well, uh, I, have, you know, I have to agree with you on that. I, don't, I, th I think I, I, you can't make it, I suppose, illegal for people to wear masks, but it does diminish your opinion of them. It's just like people on the internet who insult you from behind a pseudonym. Uh, it's not very brave uh, or, very, or very convincing. Well, that person you will have just seen as well. If you're not watching, uh, if you're listening to me on the radio, uh, basically just showing someone on the top of one of the buildings that they've been spray painting. He was uh, escorted off that uh, rooftop by the police and he was subsequently arrested. My point is, he's just completely balaclavered up. You can only see his eyes. And my point there is why, if you're so proud about your cause and you have every right to be proud about the, the cause that you're protesting, but be proud of it then and don't conceal your face. But where are you on this broader point of the protests at all? I think there's a balance to be struck. The right to protest is a sacred right and one to be cherished. I think for the people organising the protests with good intent, they should look really closely at how their cause is being portrayed because these are huge protests and it's very hard to manage those. But we see uh, sort of different strands of provocateurs participating from kind of people who are very adjacent to Islamism to actually members of the far right protesting to, uh, to whip up anti-Semitic hatred and the organisers of the protesters. It's incumbent on them to work with the police to make sure that some of the slogans that we hear, some of the chants, some of the behaviour is managed more appropriately because right now they're harming their own cause more than supporting it. Are they harming their own cause? Because many people will actually feel, and um, we'll come on to this in a second, they really want to expand this. They want to get a million people taking to the streets. And a lot of people feel very passionate that actually... By coming together, showing this solidarity, even if you have these kind of fringe pillocks uh, doing these kind of things, people will still think that this is a positive, productive, collective action. There's a difference between generating publicity and bringing more people who are already committed to your cause onto the streets and persuading the people, the silent majority. And let me just draw an, uh, an analogy here or, or a, draw a comparison. Before the last election, the People's Vote campaign, and I was a, you know, a supporter of a second referendum, put a, got a lot of people on the streets. And what happened, basically, at the election, an absolute trouncing for all the, par any, all the parties that were in favour of a second referendum. And I, I just... There are people whose livelihoods and who kind of make money out of the media and, uh, and clicks who want people on the streets because it generates income for them and it's personally lucrative. There are people, there are kind of little groups of calls like the Socialist or Workers' Party who want people on the streets because they think they can attract people, but they are not trying to persuade the majority. And it is the hijacking of a just cause by people with their, by groups and individuals with their personal agendas that, to, that are trying to polarise and make more radical. That is the problem. Um, I've expressed on my programme already... I have a lot of sympathy for what people are saying. Thousands and thousands of children now are being killed in Gaza. That doesn't show any signs of slowing down. So I kind of uh, listen to what people are calling for, which is to stop innocent babies and children being killed. I mean, it's very difficult to disagree with that sentiment. 
but I never seem to see any criticism of Hamas or I'm just racking my brain to see if I've, have I seen any at all at some of these protests. Yes, I, it's all about free Palestine. It's all about uh, stop the occupation or whatever. But where is the criticism from these people who understandably want innocent children to stop being killed? Where is the criticism for the people that are causing a lot of this, i.e. Hamas? Well, I agree with you. I haven't seen it. And that's not to say that because I haven't seen it, it doesn't exist, but it doesn't seem to be a very prominent part of the process. They would be more persuasive uh, if, they, if, if they, they made it plainer in the placards that they carried and the slogans that they shouted that they were against uh, the killing of innocents by whoever did it. And also, it does seem to me, I, I don't defend and, in fact, have opposed from the start and criticised the Israeli bombardment of Gaza. I think it's, it's both uh, wrong and a political mistake. But I, I, th I think there is a considerable difference between what happened on October the 7th, that is to say the deliberate, personal, face-to-face -face murder of innocent people and the the bombardment of a of a of an area full of israel's armed enemies i which i don't myself take as a justification uh, for a bombardment but if you look at the the laws of war in general and if you look at the behavior of this country uh, and of the united states in extinguishing the islamic state in mosul and, uh, and, and Raqqa, uh, particularly a few years ago, uh, the same method was used by them. I didn't, wasn't particularly keen on, on it then either, but it, it is accepted generally as something which you do in war. I'd, I don't, I'd, I'm not here defending it, but there is a difference between that and bursting into civilian settlements and killing uh, women and children uh, and, uh, and it's because they are who they are, uh, who in many cases are uh, unarmed and are not uh, at all human shields for military establishments or military operations. There is a difference. So, yeah, I would agree with you. I would like to see much more from the uh, Free Palestine, as they call it, demonstrations about the initial October the 7th killings than I have so far noticed. And I would make one small comment, which I always make about the slogan Free Palestine. If there is ever such a nation... It doesn't seem to me to be very likely that it will be free, uh, given the current situation of the Palestinian Authority, where I think the, the, the president was, uh, was elected for a four-year term 19 years ago, uh, where the freedom of, of speech and the, and the liberty of the media is not exactly guaranteed. Whatever such a state will be, free is not what it will be. The people who chant that slogan should wonder very much what it is that they're saying. What do you say about what they're saying? I saw uh, some protesters being interviewed the other day um, and the guy was asking the simple question, when you're shouting from the river to the sea, uh, Palestine will be free, which river are you talking about and which sea are you talking about? The guy didn't even know. He, I'm not even kidding. He didn't even know what river and what sea. And I think to myself... If you want to involve yourself uh, to the point where you're going to be taken to the streets, because a lot of people are intimidated by what's going on on the streets. They really are. Uh, and if you want to be part of that, which, you know, that's your right and all the rest of it, at least understand what it is that you're calling for. At least have like a little bit of gumption about you to have the bare basics that you're campaigning off the back of fresh in your mind. And this kind of um, omission of criticising Hamas by the people that want... And it's understandable, I can't stress enough, it is understandable um, to not want innocent children to be killed. I mean, I say this and people go mad when I say it. As a mum, my heart really feels that and I feel it passionately. I don't want innocent children, whoever they are, wherever they live and whoever's doing the killing, I want that to stop. But it is a glaring omission not to criticise Hamas and not to be encouraging Hamas show yourselves, get out of here, leave us alone, let Palestine move on without you. It's a, it's a ridiculous omission. And again, it's the, to the people who organise these protests with, with, good, with, right, with good intent, it's incumbent on them to help to try and manage this and ensure that there, there are signs, there are the voices that would criticise Hamas are prominent. Because at the moment... These protests are taken over largely, and I don't think this applies to the majority of people protesting, but the most voluble and the ones who are covered in the media are the most polarised and the most e extreme. And this, this kind of discussion on um, from the river, river to the sea, to an extent, the semantics don't matter. Jewish people in this country feel intimidated. They feel like that is a call to genocide. 
don't do it. It's not that hard. It just takes some basic empathy. In the same way, there are multiple phrases that, for any minority community, you can say, and uh, which technically are OK, but have been used in acts of violence and bear uh, and have a laden meaning for them. Just empathise. Don't do it.